Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I want to share my thoughts about this watch that I got a couple of weeks ago. It's the San Martin SN008-G. This is San Martin's take on a very popular Tudo Black Bay 58. This watch is available on AliExpress and costs now around 320 euro or 380 dollars. I would highly recommend waiting for an AliExpress sale though, because these watches get discounted quite heavily. Still, that price is quite high considering that most AliExpress watches cost around 100 to 150 bucks. So, is it worth the premium? How will it compare to other watches in a similar price range? Let's find out. First of all, a big shout out to Ivan at the Bold Hairspring for hooking me up with this watch. He also reviewed the San Martin and I will link his video in the description down below. I also wanted to mention that this is my very first experience with San Martin as a brand. I heard a lot of praise from other owners and watch reviewers, so I got curious and I wanted to check them out on my own. But I kinda never pulled the trigger because, as mentioned before, their watches are one of the more expensive ones that you can find on AliExpress. And to be honest, that kinda put me off and I never got around ordering one. Instead, I went for cheaper brands like Pagani Design, Parnis, Blieger, Suges, etc. But when I bought these cheap watches that were under 100 euro, I knew that the quality isn't going to be that great and that the watch might not last that long. However, now that I got to experience this San Martin watch, my perception changed. I feel like these brands are getting better and better and are offering a very competitive pricing compared with some other micro brands. That's only if you're willing to pay a slightly increased price for an homage watch. Before we start, this watch is available in two different colors, black and blue, and with two different movements, the new PT5000 and the well-known Salita SW200. And here I got the watch with the blue dial, the white markers and the PT5000 movement, which is the cheapest option. I know that most people bought the black version with the red triangle on the bezel insert, but personally I like the blue one even more. The reason for that is that the black dial is a matte one, while the bezel insert is made out of a shiny ceramic material. I just think that it doesn't go well together that much. With this blue version though, I really like how the bezel and the dial complement each other, so I'm very happy with my choice. And without any further ado, let's get a closer look at the watch and check out the measurements. This watch comes in with a case diameter of 40.5mm, a case thickness of 11.5, a lug to lug distance of 47.8 and a lug width of 20mm. This is the older version that still has the male end links of the bracelet. These extend quite a bit and make the overall case length a whopping 54.5mm. San Martin changed this a couple of weeks ago, so if you order this watch now, it will come with female end links. The bracelet has a nice taper as well, it tapers down nicely to 16mm and goes back up to 18mm at the clasp. The overall weight of the watch is 140 grams, sized to my wrist, which is very comfortable in my opinion. This San Martin has a water resistance rating of 200 meters, which is quite impressive considering the slim profile of the watch. With the dimensions out of the way, here's how it looks like on my 7 inch wrist. I'm a big fan of the overall compact size of the watch, especially the 11.5mm thickness is really comfortable to wear. And as some of you might know, AliExpress watches tend to be on the bigger, chunkier side. I do plan to get the actual Tudor Black Bay as a birthday gift for myself this year, so I can't wait to compare these two watches side by side. Stay tuned and hit the subscribe button if you don't wanna miss that. Let's have a closer look at the finishing and the build quality, and this is where it surprised me the most. It is really well built and well finished. I didn't expect this level of finishing from an AliExpress watch. I believe that this is very similar to the kind of build quality that you can find on watches in the $1000 price range. We have a completely brushed case here with a nice high polished chamfered edge. The bracelet is also brushed on top and has a mirror polished on the side. The clasp features a hexagonal San Martin logo, which I'm a big fan of. It is beautifully milled and features four micro adjustments. We have solid end links here and also solid links that are secured with tiny screws. 
the fact that the bracelet features these rivets might scare some people off, but personally I don't mind them that much. The screw in case pack is very simple, we have no specs, no logo or anything written here. I believe the reason for that is that San Martin also offers custom dials and case pack engravings, so that you could basically design it on your own, if you so desire. The screw down crown is located at the 3 o'clock position and features an engraved shark. San Martin have been criticized in the past on their branding choices. I don't mind the shark on the crown that much, but I have to admit that it's kind of generic. As far as I know, they started to implement the hexagonal logo on their newest models. As mentioned before, the bezel insert is made out of ceramic material and features a loom pip on 12 o'clock. I am very happy to report that there are no QC or alignment issues whatsoever. The bezel has a very satisfying click and is aligning perfectly. Let's have a listen. One tiny thing that I noticed is that the numbers engraved on the bezel insert are rather thin. It is not a negative for me, but in certain light conditions you almost cannot see them. Protecting the dial is a very nicely domed sapphire crystal. I am personally a big fan of it, because most double domed sapphire crystals stick out too much, add unnecessary reflections and hardly look good in my opinion. San Martin however executed this one very well. The crystal also features some blue AR coating, which goes perfectly with the blue shades of this watch. The dial is rather simple, we have a white triangle applied at 12 o'clock and white dots everywhere else except the 3, 6 and 9. Below the triangle is again San Martin's hexagon logo. I was not a big fan of it in the beginning, but it kind of grew on me. I think that they did a really good job on the small little details of their logo but it depends on how the light hits the dial. We find the words automatic 200 meters painted in white above the 6 o'clock marker. I'm a big fan of the handset that they used. Sure, it's straight out copied from Tudor, but at least they did it well. The snowflake hands might not be for everyone, but personally I prefer them all day every day over Mercedes hands. And just as the dial markers, these are filled with blue BGW9 loom, and that's amazing. The loom on this watch is really really strong, I was quite surprised to be honest. So much that I decided to throw a quick loom battle in here. Here you can see it, next to the Seiko Save the Ocean and the Zelos Hammerhead 3. These watches have the strongest loom in my collection. And as you can see, the San Martin glows really nicely and even beats the Zelos. The movement that ticks inside this watch is the PT5000. It's basically a clone of the ETA 2824. Some people do have a problem with that, but personally I don't mind it at all. I'm also very happy to report that this movement is quite accurate. I measured it a couple of times with this app called the Watch Accuracy Meter and got quite nice results. These range between minus 1 seconds per day and plus 5 seconds per day. Not too bad. You do get the option to choose the Celita SW200, but that makes the price spike up to almost 500 bucks. I think that the movement choice on these watches is a good one, because these movements, although being more expensive, are thinner than the good old Seiko NH35, and that allows the companies to build slimmer watches. So after owning this watch for around 2 months or so, I am quite pleasantly surprised by the amount of watch that you get here. Sure, it's quite expensive considering that it comes from a platform like AliExpress, but I still think that you get a lot of watch for your money. If you compare that to some horribly misaligned entry-level Seikos that you can buy for the same price, I think that you get a really good deal here, especially if you wait for the next AliExpress sale. So, what are some negatives? Which points could be improved? Well, the first thing is the fact that this is a 40.5mm watch, so it does have some wrist presence. On my 7 inch wrist, that's not a problem, but guys with smaller wrists might think otherwise. In that regard, it's not really like the original Black Bay 58. I think it wears a little bit larger. Other than that, the only thing that I could criticize are the male end links, 
which they already changed, and the go state position of the movement. But all of these points are not really deal breakers for me. Quite the opposite actually. This watch made me curious about other watches that San Martin offer. I know, most of their watches are homage watches, but they do offer some interesting pieces as well. I am quite tempted to order their 39mm Vintage Explorer, or the newest release, the 36mm Explorer. I will leave some links in the description down below if you want to check these ones out. So what do you guys think? Would you spend that amount of money on an homage watch? Let me know in the comment section down below. I might do another video where I compare this to some of my other watches in my collection, like the Steinhardt OVM39. Let me know if you guys are interested in this and I will make it happen. Subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss the upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching, this is Michael and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Cheers!